Okay, so here we have a problem dealing with two things. The intersection symbol, the upside down U, and that, that just refers to what do different groups have in common? Right? What do they both share? The other one is the union symbol, the which looks like a U, and this represents um, not only do what groups have in what the groups have in common, but what do they each have individually? So essentially, what does if you put all of them together, what do you have? All the groups together. The other symbol you might see um, that that relates to these two things is the dash or complement symbol. So, for example, if you're dealing with the set A, the complement of A would be written like this, and it means, and if A is a group of something, the complement of A. Right, is what is not within A, right? what's outside that group. And that sounds abstract, and, and it is, but when we apply some context to it, we might see just how easy this can be. So here we have if D equals, and they're defining D as a set, it's a capital letter, right? And they're telling you these numbers are in the group, sometimes referred to the, as the universe. And here D is equal to, I'm going to change colors there, D, right, set D, is equal to 1, 2, all the way up, all the whole numbers, up to 10. Now, they're saying that A, B, and C are subsets um, of D, right? It says with subsets A, B, and C. That just means that A is a subset of D. You might see it written like that, that symbol. It's kind of like a sideways U with a line underneath that equals subset. And they're just saying, well, A is a set that's a subset of D, so it's a part of the numbers that are in D. And so is B, that's a subset of D, and so is C, that's a subset of D. So they're all subsets, they're all taken from D. And then they outline what each, what is actually in each set, right? A has the numbers 4, 6, and 8. And then B has the numbers, what do they say? They say 6, 7, 8, and 9. And C has the numbers 1, 2, three, and four. So you know that what we're going to try and start looking at here is what do they have in common? That's the first question. A intersect B. So if we look at A and B, they both have one number in common. I see so far six. And a second number, there it is, eight. They both have six and eight. That means the intersection is six and eight. Right? That's, that, those, that's the, the set they have in common. What about B and C? What do they have in common? Well, I noticed that C has 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And B has 6, 7, 8, 9. And so in that case, they have nothing in common. This you can refer to as the empty set. Oops, different color. You might just draw brackets with nothing inside. Or you can draw a circle with a line through it. This is the, the null set. In other words, they have nothing in common. It's an empty set. It's kind of fun, though, to write this circle with a line through that symbol. You feel, I guess, like you're part of the math world because you know the language of it. However, um, A union B is next. So if we look at A and B, what are all the different things they have? I see four, they both have six, then B has seven, and they both have eight and nine. So you don't list doubles here. You don't want to repeat. That's why often when you look at the union definition, they say, okay, if you want to look at A union B, right, that's equal to what? Well, A plus B minus the intersection of A and B. In other words, it's everything that A and, and, and B have. But when you think about a Venn diagram, let's say, and this is A and this is B. If you look at everything in A and B, what ends up happening is if they intersect at all, right? When you count A, you also count the intersection. And then when you count B, you count it again. So you're counting this intersection twice. And that's the intersection. So the idea is that you take it away. That's a fancy way of saying don't count twice, right? So here with A union B, we have what? Four, six, just once, even though it appears twice. We don't need to represent it twice. Seven and eight and nine. And B union C follows the same idea, where C has one, two, three, four, and uh, B has six, seven, eight, nine. So what's that? Well. It's every number pretty much, except for five, right? One, two, three, four, and then six, seven, eight, and nine. So they have nothing in common, right? We established that before here. But when you find the union, they have plenty of elements or 
numbers here that they have in common. Remember that uh, each individual number or value within a set is called an element. And last we have something that might seem complicated, but really what they're telling us, we have the parentheses here, so we'll start there, to find the union of A, B, and C, and then take the complement of it. In other words, what's left over, what hasn't been used. So if we look at the union here between A, B, and C, that gives us 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's from C, and then, well, 6, 7, 8, and 9. It's actually equal to the B union C, right? Because A doesn't add anything that wasn't already there. Um, with that being said, what's left over? And, and you might not remember this, but remember, um, A, B, and C are all taken from D. That's the universe of the set that they're all taken from. So, and D included every number 1 through 10, all those, those whole numbers, right? So we can see that 5 is missing, right? Should be here. And what else? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then just 10 is also missing. So there are two elements in this last grouping here, this last union, and that's 5 and 10. Those are the complement of A, union B, union C. All right, hope this helped.